Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on AWS storage. So in the next few lessons we're going to be looking at the different storage options that Amazon Web Services offers. So let's first take a look at all of the options that are available to us in terms of storage in AWS. Now cloud storage is a critical component of cloud computing, holding the information used by applications. Big data analytics, data warehouses, IoT, databases and backup and archive applications all rely on some form of data storage architecture. Cloud storage is typically more reliable, scalable and secure than traditional on-prem storage systems. Now AWS offers a complete range of cloud storage services to support both application and archival compliance requirements. You have the option to select from object, file, and block storage services, as well as cloud data migration options to start designing the foundation of your IT environment. We're going to take a look at some of the most popular ones that are used and that will be covered in the exam. So the five main storage options that AWS offers are S3, which is by far the most popular. There's the Elastic Block Storage, we have the Elastic File System, and then we have two of the lesser known or less used options, which is Glacier and the Storage Gateway. So in this lesson, let's go ahead and take a little bit deeper dive into the S3, or also known as a Simple Storage Service. And just in exam tip, sometimes AWS is known to ask simple questions such as what does S3 stand for? So just keep in mind that it stands for Simple Storage Service. Now S3 is an object storage service that offers scalability, availability, security, and performance. So this means that customers of all sizes and industries can use it to store and protect any amount of data for a range of use cases such as websites, mobile apps, backup restore, archive, and so on. Now S3 provides easy to use management features so you can organize your data and configure fine-tuned access controls to meet your specific business, organizational, and compliance requirements. Now some of the key benefits of S3 is First and foremost is the industry leading performance, scalability, availability, and durability. Now I know that's a mouthful, but just keep in mind the term known as 11 nines. Now S3 is designed for 99.9999, basically 11 nines of data durability, of data durability because it automatically creates and store copies of all S3 objects across multiple systems. This means your data is available when needed and protected against failures, errors, and threats. The S3 also has a wide range of cost-effective storage options, which we'll look at later on in this lecture. It has unmatched security, compliance, and audit capabilities. You can store your data in S3 and secure it from unauthorized access with encryption features and access management controls. It maintains compliance programs such as the PCI DSS, the FedRAMP, the EU Data Protection Directive, and many more. And AWS also supports numerous auditing capabilities to monitor access requests to your S3 resources, which we can do through CloudTrail, which we'll look at later on in this course. Additionally, you can use management tools for granular data control. You can classify, manage, and report on your data using features such as the S3 storage class analysis, or the S3 lifecycle, or the cross-region replication. And again, we will look at these when we do the lab towards the end of this lecture. You can run big data analytics across your S3 objects and other data sets in AWS with their query in place services. And finally, store and protect your data in S3 by working with a partner from the AWS Partner Network. Now the S3 offers a range of storage classes designed for different use cases. So there are five main ones that are there. First, you have the standard one, which offers the high durability, availability, and performance object storage for frequently accessed data. Now, because it delivers low latency and high throughput, the standard is appropriate for a wide variety of use cases, including cloud applications, 
dynamic websites, content distribution, mobile and gaming applications, and big data analytics. Now keep in mind that storage classes can be configured at the object level, and a single bucket can contain objects stored across S3 standard, tiering, IA, and so on. There's also the S3 intelligent tiering. Now the tiering is something new that has been introduced by Amazon just recently, and the 2019 exam version is most likely going to be covering this also. Now this storage class is designed to optimize costs by automatically moving data to the most cost-effective tier without performance impact or operational overhead. It works by storing objects in two access tiers. One tier that is optimized for frequent access, and an other lower cost tier that is optimized for infrequent access. The next one is the standard IA or the standard infrequent access is for data that is accessed less frequently but still requires rapid access when needed. The IA offers the high durability, the high throughput, and low latency of the standard with a low per GB storage price and a per GB retrieval fee. Then you have the one zone infrequent access or one zone IA. It's meant for data that is accessed less frequently but requires rapid access when needed. Unlike the other storage classes which store data in a minimum of three availability zones, the one zone IA stores data in a single availability zone, but it costs 20% less than the standard IA. The one zone IA is ideal for customers who want a lower cost option for infrequently accessed data, but do not require availability and resilience of the standard or the standard IA. So it's a good choice for storing secondary backup copies of on-prem data or easily recreatable data. Because keep in mind one of the main drawbacks of the one zone IA is that it is not fault tolerant. And then lastly you have the Glacier which is a secure, durable, and low cost storage class for archiving data. You can reliably store any amount of data at costs that are competitive with or cheaper than on-prem solutions. Now keep in mind that the Glacier provides three retrieval options that range from few minutes to a few hours. You can upload objects directly to S3 Glacier or use the S3 lifecycle policies to transfer data between any of the storage classes and we'll look at the lifecycle policies when we do the lab towards the end of this lecture. So this table that you guys see gives you a good comparison of the different options that are available. And again, there's an asterisk by the tiering because it's a newly introduced service by Amazon. But I highly suggest that you guys take a close look and memorize the different options, the different S3 storing options that are available because there will be a few questions that are solely based on the storage classes for S3. So it's good to know the difference between standard IA and the one zone IA and the glacier for storage purposes. Now one thing to keep in mind for exam purposes and for real world application purposes is that the S3 is an object based storage class. It means that it cannot be a boot volume and it cannot hold applications. It can only hold objects. So think of an S3 bucket as a folder in which you can put files and other folders. So you can put any amount of files, any amount of folders within an S3 bucket. And lastly, another thing to keep in mind for S3, which again, I will mention again when we do the lab, is that the names have to be unique across the AWS platform. Their names are DNS-based names, so they have to be unique. So let's go ahead and create our first S3 bucket.